In America, Thanksgiving is a very selfish time. Thursday, that is the time to indulge yourself, to overeat. No self-control. Get whatever you want. In fact, get two of them. And then while you're in the flesh, Friday morning, why don't you go on down to Best Buy or Walmart and, and enjoy some Black Friday, right? Take that Friday to overindulge, overspend, go into debt now for the rest of the year, go into debt for many months to come and buying Christmas presents for people. And look, most of the stuff they're selling, frankly, is junk. It is junk. It will end up in the landfill before one year's time is complete. Most of it is plastic. It's valueless. But yet people, ooh, it's shiny. Ooh, I want that. And listen, we need to be balanced. As Christians, we need to understand what God's attitude would be for us during this time of year. Look, Thursday ought to be a time of you fellowshipping with believers or with family and having a good attitude and a good spirit and looking for, for ways to please the Lord. And you can't do that through gluttony. And Friday, well, it's Black Friday, Black Soul Friday, right? Some of the ways people act, right? We shouldn't let that infect us and get us greedy of things we don't really need. Black Friday, typically people will tell you that that phrase simply means that is when your retailers and your merchandisers, for the first time, now they're into the black. You know, they use red to note when you're negative, when your budget is in the negative and say, well, this is the day that they can finally catch up and be in the black. Well, that's actually a spin. That's a lie. That's not what Black Friday means. That's not where it came from. You know, the origin of Black Friday was actually in 1869. There was a run on the bank. There was a couple banksters that caused a gold run. And they bought a lot of gold. It's called a, today the, in the stock market, they call it a pump and dump. You pump up the value of something and then you sell it all off and you thereby siphon all the wealth of the investors. They see it on the move. Oh, that must be a good investment. They put all their money in it and then they siphon it off making hundreds of thousands of dollars more and then once everybody figure out what's going on, like musical chairs, somebody's left with nothing. And there were lives that were destroyed in 1869 and they called this the Black Friday because of what happened on the gold market. How, they, how the bankers conspired to steal money from people. And I don't think it's a coincidence that today, Black Friday, is when everybody goes into debt for more money than they should. They spend more money than they ought to. But I, I can't resist that sale. Don't you know they're selling 60-inch TVs for $200? you got to go get one. Well, the problem is there's only one. Right? They're advertising it, and you get down there, and it's like, well, that one's gone. But, man, we got a 50-inch for you, and it's only $350. Well, you're there. You stood in line for all those hours. right? Your covetousness, your greed overwhelms you, and you end up buying something you didn't want anyway. And look, we have to be careful this type of time of year. We need to encourage people not to involve themselves in that banker conspiracy that wants to take all of our wealth. We need to stay focused on the Word of God. Yeah, I think we as Christians ought to hate Black Friday. Yeah. Amen, that's good. I think we really ought to. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, these black soul corporations have an evil agenda, and they want to hurt people and hurt the economy, and they're doing it through promising you some shiny piece of plastic, and it, it's worthless. You know, I mean, today it really is a disgusting display of Americanism, what Black Friday has become. It's just greed, it's pride, it's that's mine, I was here first. You know, and it's destroying children's view of finances, right, of needs and wants. It's destroying children's views of their very own parents when they see how the parents act. 